Good day, my friends. We're at chapter 5, verse 26 of Deuteronomy. For who is there of all flesh who has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say. And speak thou unto us all that the Lord your God or our God shall speak unto you. And we shall hear it, and so we will do it. Notes. They asked that the Lord uh, speak solely with Moses, and he could convey the message to them. They were pretty afraid, and who could blame them? Verse 28. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when you spoke unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken unto you. They have well said all that they have spoken. Notes. In other words, the Lord approved what Israel had requested because they expressed a proper reverence and a due sense on their part of the unworthiness of sinful men to come into the presence of the great and holy God. Verse 29. Oh, that there was such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that I might be well with them and with their children forever. In other words, Notes. In other words, God is looking upon their heart, and he sees that they do have fear for him, but it will not last, and uh, he cannot accept any service or worship that is not rendered truly from the heart. In other words, he's saying that I know that they're doing the right thing now, but eventually they're just going to just kind of bog down and just start going their own way, which God can never accept. Verse 30. Go say to them, Get you into your tents again. Notes, this was at the time of the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. But as for you, Moses, you stand here by me, and I will speak unto you all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which you shall teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give unto them to possess it. You shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Uh, you shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live, and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Notes. Now all of this is of extreme significance in that these people were raised up for the sole purpose of serving, one might say, basically as the womb of the Messiah, and to whom the word of God would be given, and consequently all of this pertains to our salvation. When we read these Old Testament accounts, we should understand that each happening brings us a few steps closer to the redemption we now possess in Christ. Now understanding it in that fashion makes it much more important, actually the single most important thing in the entirety of the world. Chapter 6 now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land where you go to possess it. Notes. Now the prosper, uh, prosperity of Israel and the blessings of the Lord upon the land and in every capacity had to do with Israel understanding and obeying the law. Well, it is the same presently with us presently as it regards obeying the word of God. I mean, you do it, you get blessed, you don't, you get cursed. It's not very complicated. Verse 2. That you might fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, you and your son and your son's son, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Notes. Uh, the fear mentioned here is not a uh, a slavish fear or whoa a big rock is going to fall on me but but rather a fear of the Lord in respect to disobeying him and of that to which such disobedience would lead verse 3 hear therefore O Israel and observe to do it that it may be well with you and that you may increase mightily as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you in the land that flows with milk and honey Notes. In other words, do the best that you can to obey the law. I mean, God understands that you're not going to be able to keep that. It's impossible for every person to keep the law. It's impossible for one person to fully keep the law. 
So, I mean, God has to give you some kind of a leniency. Now, the Lord promised that it would go well with them and that they would be greatly blessed. Now, the word blessing actually refers to an increase. So Israel's increase depended upon her obedience to the Lord. You guys out there that are wanting a financial breakthrough, be obedient to the Lord, and he will do it. Verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Notes. Now, there are two Hebrew words for the English word one. The first means a single or only one, and the second, a compound unity. It is the second that is used in this verse, so this verse actually implies the Trinity to a little bit. And as far as verse 5 is concerned, we know that Jesus quoted this very verse in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Verse 6. And these words which I commanded you this day shall be in your heart. Notes. Now, where the true love of God exists in the heart, it will manifest itself in a regard to his will and in the diligent keeping of his commandments. Uh, the believer can keep the commandments of the Lord only by understanding that Christ is the source while the cross is the means. When out of faith, when our faith is anchored exclusively in Christ and his cross, the Holy Spirit will actually he keep he will keep the commandments through us. It's the doctrine of what I like to call imputed righteousness. You see, every human being does not have any light within themselves. They don't have any righteousness. They are just jacked up, chewed up people. But whenever God steps in and people place their faith in Him, it's as if we had never sinned, just as if I'd sinned, or just as justified, just as if I'd never sinned is what I'm trying to say. It's justification through faith. Verse 7. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk to uh, talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. Notes. In other words, the Lord... The, the word of God must be the criteria for all things. The commandment given them has not changed, and it is still that way presently. Verse 8, And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Notes. Now, Israelites took this literally, and they made these things called phylacteries. And they put them on their foreheads and on their wrists, it was basically a small box-like little deal containing a thin piece of leather and on which were inscribed one or more passage of, uh, passages of Scripture. It's, it would be very, uh, fairly common for them to have the entire Ten Commandments wrapped up in a little scroll and stuffed into this thing. Well, as good as that sounds, unfortunately, the Jews made a ritual of such doing it more for show than anything else. If you don't believe me, read Matthew chapter 23, verse 5. Verse 9. And you shall write them upon the post of your house and, and on your gates. Notes. The word of God was to ever be before Israel in every single capacity. But unfortunately, as we're going to read, they didn't keep it quite that good. Verse 10. And it shall be when the Lord your God shall have brought you into the land which he swore unto your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you a great and goodly city which you built not, and houses full of things which you did not build, and wells you did not dig, which you dug not, vineyards and olive trees which you planted not, when you shall have eaten and be full." Then beware, lest you forget the Lord which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from, from the house of bondage. And we must pick up in chapter 6, verse 13 of Deuteronomy. Thank you very much.